This one's called The Lemur's Tail. In a small cage on a big ship in a busy, busy port sat a baby lemur far from his home in Madagascar. He was lonely without his family, bored in his cage and frightened of the thieves who had stolen him and shocked by the cold, cold winter. Madagascar is a really hot place, really hot island of Africa. At night, his dreams were of hot countries, faraway forests and birds of paradise. By day, he shivered in the icy winds and planned his escape. Good. One evening, his cage was left open and he seized his chance. He raced down the gangplank and sped along the harbour towards the town, searching for somewhere safe. Dashing up a tree and darting over rooftops, he was drawn to a window glowing with light of a cosy little house across a narrow street. The baby lemur pressed his nose to the glass. Inside, lush green plants grew everywhere. They reminded him of home. Up, 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 he scrambled until he reached a damp, dark chimney. Down, 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 he scuttled and landed in an empty fireplace. Lucky it was empty, isn't it? Yeah. There he waited until all was quiet. Slowly, silently, he crept out to find food. He burrowed under a pile of newspapers, rummaged inside a silken hat, <laughs> nibbled at a tasty orchid and squeezed under the larder door. The larder's where all the food's kept. There he began a long and sticky feast. And when he was full, he hid away in secret spot and sank into a deep sleep. Sweeties. <laughs> At breakfast, Mrs. Larrabee poured a smidgen of her favourite treat, Smidgen. dandelion syrup, into her coffee. Gracious, dearest, she said to her husband, <laughs> this jug was quite full yesterday. Have you been squiffling my dandelion syrup? Dandelion? Squiffling? Me? Gasped Mr Larrabee. Well, it must have been someone, sniffed his wife. Slowly, they turned to look at their daughter, Lara. Lara. It wasn't me, said Lara. She couldn't think of anything more horrible than her mother's dandelion syrup. After lunch, Mr. Larrabee asked his wife to bring him his favourite treat, a sweet marzipan pig. pig. Well, Mrs. Larrabee searched the larder but couldn't find anything but a curly pink tail. My pig, spluttered Mr. Larrabee. Oh, wife, explain yourself. Oh, husband, a woman with a waist as trim as mine would never go near a marzipan pig. What does marzipan mean? Marzipan is um, a sweet thing made of almond and sugar. Sweet. It's a sweet, thing. really. A sweet thing. They turned to look at Lara. I don't even like marzipan, she protested. Dear me. After supper, Mr Larrabee went to water his plants. Something was wrong. My orchid, he bellowed. What has happened to my beautiful orchid? Now, orchids grow in Madagascar. That's where they come from. Well, Mrs. Larrabee hurried to his side. What has that girl been up to now? She gasped. It wasn't me, screamed Lara. Up to your bedroom at once, ordered Mrs. Larrabee. At once, ordered Mr. Larrabee. Lara flew up the stairs threw open her door and dived onto her bed and cried her eyes out. Dearie me. I do worry about Lara, whispered Mrs Larrabee. Perhaps she is a little lonely. Mr Larrabee scratched his head and polished his magnifying glass. That means clean. That means clean, yeah. Later, 
When the Larrabees were snoring in their beds, the lemur crept out. He inspected the inks in the study, played with powder in the bathroom, and borrowed a brush from Mrs. Larrabee's dressing table. I don't know, look at the state of him. Then slowly, silently, he glided into Lara's bedroom. And there, with his beautiful tail, he swept a tear from the sleeping girl's cheek. That night, Lara dreamt of hot countries, far away forests, and birds of paradise. Once more, the lemur retired to his hiding place. The next morning, Mr. Larrabee announced he felt like tea instead of coffee. <gasps> Mrs. Larrabee went pink with excitement. We haven't had tea for ages, she laughed. I'll clean out the pot. She reached for the teapot on top of the dresser and it felt very heavy. When she took off the lid, she nearly fainted. Heavens, do look, my love, there's something here. Mr. Larrabee hurried over and stared inside. What is that? asked his wife. Mr. Larrabee turned pale. That, my dear woman, he hissed through gritted teeth, was a splendid and very exquisite, remarkably rare orchid from Madagascar. He sat down with a thumb. No, dear, the furry thing, insisted Mrs. Larrabee. Mr. Larrabee took a closer look. Utterly odd, odd. he mused. <laughs> That's a ring-tailed lemur. <laughs> lemur. Lemur. <laughs> the house went silent. <laughs> they were all quiet. Slowly, Mrs. Larrabee turned to face her daughter. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. For not believing you, darling, she whispered tenderly. Lara looked curiously at the What's teapot. Tenderly, mean? tenderly means in a loving way. Lara looked curiously at the teapot. As she did so, the lemur woke up, sprang into her arms, and because he was so very shy, he nestled deep into the folds of her dress. Well, fancy, laughed Mr. Larrabee. Can he stay? asked Lara. Well, of course. We'll call him Earl Grey. Earl Grey? Yeah, That's like the tea, name. because he came out of a teapot, you see. <laughs> yeah, proclaimed Mr. Larrabee. And because he is so very far away from home, he can stay as long as he likes, whispered Mrs. Larrabee, hugging Lara. There we go, you see. And that's what he did. To this day, Earl Grey still appears at Lara's bedside for stories of hot countries, faraway forests and birds of paradise. And just as Lara's dreams begin, he retires to his teapot and sleeps soundly. Do you know, don't do that please. No one can explain how he manages to put the lid on.